Welcome to Sunday service. How are you doing? I'm so happy you are able to join us for Sunday service this evening. I trust that all is well with you. I trust that all is well with your family. And I trust that things are working out the way you expected them to work out. But if they are not, hold on. God is working behind the scenes to bring to you your miracles. You are a candidate for a testimony. If you believe that, shout a big amen. Leave a comment and say, I am a candidate for a miracle. And if you're a candidate for a miracle, then you are a candidate for a testimony. You are blessed. God is working things out for you. Never ever forget our theme this year. It is a year we're going to flourish. It is a year we're going to expand. It is a year we're going to increase more than ever. Glory be to God. I'm excited and excited about 2022 because of what God is set to do. That is why in, at the halfway point of fifth, sixth, and maybe seventh month, sorry, sixth or seventh month, sorry, we'll be talking about the subject of faith. Ah, I am truly, truly excited about it. And last week we started the faith series with a subtopic which I call What Faith Isn't what faith isn't. Why am I starting off talking about what faith isn't? Because there has been a lot of misconceptions about what faith is. And if we don't eliminate those misconceptions, we will struggle to building this building, this edifice of faith, to becoming this giant of faith that we ought to be if we don't eliminate those misconceptions. Paul, writing to the Corinthians church, told them something. He says, see, that we need, that they need to do what? Cast down, bring down, destroy everything that has exalted itself above the knowledge of God, above the knowledge of Christ. So anything that is not what the Word of God has said, we need to cast them down. Now, whose job is it to bring those things down, those strongholds? Whose job is it to cast them down? It is your job. It is my job. It is not actually God's job. So how do we cast it down? We need to go back to the Word. Cast down everything that exalts itself against, against the knowledge of God. So that means we need to go back to the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Christ, which is contained in His Word, and use the Word of God as building blocks to build up a new stronghold of revelation, revelation knowledge of God's Word to replace every other thing in the past that has become a stronghold in our mind. Hallelujah. So that's why we're going to go back to the world. But Sundays are a bit restricted and limited due to the lot of activities that, I, that we are engaged in on Sunday, a lot of things that we do on, in Sunday service. So what happened last Tuesday is that we took the things we learned on Sunday and sat on them on Tuesday and Tuesday's service was awesome and I think that we're going to do throughout this series we'll take the things we learned on Sunday take them to Tuesday Bible Suffering and sit on them we will dissect God's word and we will reason together we will question each other and we will contribute the Bible says this is how the church is edified so join me this Tuesday Bible Suffering we're going to hang out and tear into pieces the things I'm going to talk about today. So that means I will not really go deep. I'll mention them, explain them, but we'll sit on them on Tuesday. Glory be to God. Now, if you missed the previous um, service, catch up with the podcast, catch up on YouTube, catch up from the website every resource that you need the past messages they are all on these platforms for you to catch up on 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, what faith isn't? The first thing we looked at last Tuesday, and of course last Sunday, we said that faith isn't a feeling. So we sat on it on Tuesday. It was awesome. Mind-blowing. The second thing we said that faith isn't is that faith isn't a positive mental attitude. And I like this. Faith isn't a positive mental attitude. That's the third thing. The second thing we talked about is that faith isn't did less. That means faith without deeds, faith without actions, actions that correspond with what you trust God for is dead. And James talked about that. So I'm going to move on from that. I'm going to move on from that. Faith isn't deedless. Faith, hallelujah, isn't a positive mental attitude. Father, I thank you. I give you praise. Holy Spirit, you know I have no words of mine to speak to God's people this evening. That's why my trust is in you. That is why I depend on you a hundred percent. I don't lean on my own understanding. I lean on your revelatory knowledge of God's word. You are the teacher. Use my voice. Use me to communicate God's word to God's people this evening. I ask and I believe you will do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Faith isn't a positive mental attitude. And we're going to continue from there. So the fourth thing we're going to look, look at is similar to that. And I put down that faith is not believe in yourself. Now, if you recall what I taught on Sunday about faith not being a positive mental attitude, I talked about believing in yourself. And I said, there's nothing wrong with that. And I also said that being positive is positive. There's nothing wrong with being positive. And I even told you that as, a, as, as one of my personal, um, will I say, life mantras is that I love being around positive people. I cannot stand negative people. And that is me. So it's good to be around positivity because what you hang around will finally get into you. Whatever you have in your environment, and let me put this way, whatever you are allowed to thrive in your environment and all around you, will eventually get into you. That is why the Bible talks about the kind of company you keep. And that's why in the secular world, we talk about birds of the same feather. The Bible says that good manners is corrupted by evil communication. What you allow to thrive around you will finally get into you. So if you allow negativity to thrive around you, it will finally get into you. This is so important that you note this. So in this fourth point of what faith isn't, I said it is not believing in yourself. And remember, the faith we are talking about here is the supernatural faith. Is the God kind of faith which Jesus introduced to his disciples in Mark chapter 11 verse 22. After he cursed the fig tree, they came along the same way the next day to discover that that tree had dried up. The Bible says dried up from its roots. This is an overnight miracle. I mean, it is even against nature. When a tree dies, it does not die overnight. It is a supernatural occurrence. It was the power behind the word of Jesus that went to work when he says, let no man eat fruit of you anymore. That supernatural force that backs up the word of God went into action to ensure that what Jesus said comes to pass. And that tree, the Bible says, died from the root overnight. And the disciples were perplexed and they said to Jesus, Hey, 
that tree you cursed is dead. And Jesus said, hey, calm down. And I'm sure he said it is an opportunity to teach my disciples something. He told them, have the faith of God. So it is that God kind of faith that we're talking about today. And that God kind of faith does not do what in your human capacity you can do. That's why the disciples were perplexed. Nothing in nature will dry up a plant overnight. See, it's summer now, and along my driveway, we've got a lot of grass that are just creeping up through the cracks of the interlocking stones. Usually before the past years, the past summers, I'll get my jet wash and just jet wash it and all that. <laughs> but I didn't do that this year. Do you know why? Because cost of living is getting so high. Um, bills are getting so high. So it would be stupid to do that. Number two, we are also trying to save the planet. That is wasting water. Though it's not so much water because of the nozzle and all that, but it is still water at the end of the day. So I decided to buy a weed killer because I was really against all these chemicals and all that. So I tell you buy a weed killer. So I sprayed it all over. All the weeds they were, you know, piercing through the cracks of the interlocking stone and all that. I came out the next day, the weed were still as green <laughs> as they were the previous day. Came back a few days later, still as green. I went again, sprayed it again on some, not all. This is after the third day. And I kept it back. One week later, I forgot about one week later. I remember I tried to check the driveway. Guess what? Oh, the weeds. We are dead. Dead. What I mean, dead. 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 <laughs> Brown and dead. There was no life in them. It took time. Because I read the container of the weed killer. They actually said that it to kill the weed to his root. I was like, hmm, this sounds like Mark chapter 11. This sounds like Jesus cursing the fig tree. He's going to kill the weed to the root. And guess what? The weed are now all dead to their root. I'm like, wow. But it took time and it took some chemical. So there was power in that chemical to walk on the weed over time to kill them. We have so much faith in the, in the way they side, though at the point I doubted it, but we have so much faith. If I didn't have faith that the way they side will do his job, I wouldn't have bought it. How much more as a believer should we put our faith in the word of God? If Jesus said it, we should believe it. If God said it, we should believe it. If the Bible said it, we should believe it. Believe it and know for certain and know for sure that what God's word have said must surely come to pass. Hallelujah. Jesus told them, calm down. I said it that nobody will eat fruit of the tree. But let's assume that they believe that the word of Christ will come true. But I'm sure they never believed it was going to come true overnight. Because it was against, it was contrary to nature. It takes time for death to show on the tree. Even though it is dead. Go cut off a tree right now and let it lie in the field. The tree, the branches, the leaves of the fallen tree will still be green for some days. Why there is still sap in the trunk, they still feeding the branches. So they will still be green for some days. So they expected that to happen. Maybe they did or maybe they didn't. But let's assume they did. They did not expect an overnight miracle. Yeah. Listen to me. Anytime God's word is released, it happened at the time it was released. You didn't hear me. Listen to me. Anytime God's word is released, it happens at the time it is released. Now I'm going to do a demonstration. Listen to me, Liz, watching this. I say to you that is sick, feeling pain, in the name of Jesus, you are whole. 
That sickness goes. That pain goes. Now, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Guess what? The Bible said that he sent his word and he healed them. Because they, by the stripes of Jesus, the Bible tells me, you are healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Guess what? You might still be feeling the pain right now. But if you truly believe that God's word happens, occurs, is potent, creates, heals at the time it was sent, do you know when you were healed? At the same time I said it, all you need to do is to believe it. Then it will happen. Once you believe it and you truly believe it, you need to not get off from that bed. You're watching me. Go do something that will make you feel that pain or makes you feel the pain. Even if you feel the pain, persist in it. That is how you act on your belief. If you don't act on your belief, I am sorry to announce to you that you don't have faith. Because faith is seen in your actions. That is why when James and Peter prayed for the paralytic, and they get come beautiful. They didn't just say, rise in the name of Jesus and walk, and left the man there and walked away. What did they do? They pulled the man up. And the Bible says, it's at the point where they pulled the man up that his feet received strength. Now, an onlooker will think that he received his healing at the time he was pulled up. No, he received his healing at the time Peter, John, gave the command. He sent his word and he healed them. Healing occurs when the word is sent. Healing occurs when you believe the sent word. But listen, healing will not be manifested. Healing will not be manifest in your body until... You act on your belief until you act on the sent word. Alas, this is where a lot of people miss it. Healing occurs when you believe. Healing is manifested when you act. That's a good quote. <laughs> I'll say it again. Healing occurs when you believe. Healing is manifested when you act. A simple principle that we must all understand. That is how it works. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. So, when it comes to things you cannot do, the natural sequence of life is that a tree dies over time. But the abnormal sequence of a tree dying is that it occurs overnight. So that's why Jesus did not tell them, how, did not tell them, have faith in nature that the tree will die. <laughs> he told them, for this to manifest overnight, that is the dryness of the tree, to manifest overnight, it is abnormal. It is supernatural. It is not normal. It is not natural. It is supernatural. So for supernatural, natural occurrences which we call miracles your natural human faith cannot deliver it only supernatural faith another word for supernatural faith is the faith of god the faith of god delivers the supernatural and that's the faith we're talking about so when we say faith series we're talking about supernatural faith series non-natural faith series. Don't worry. We're going to have another subtopic where we look at the different types of faith and it's going to be clearer. So, don't, faith is not believing yourself. It's not self-confidence. It's not having a good self-esteem about yourself. No. It is trusting in God. Putting your faith in God. Believing that God will do what man cannot do. It is putting your faith in God, trusting that God will bring to pass what man cannot bring to pass. So you don't put your faith in yourself. You put your faith in God. 
and I put it down here. I said, does faith in yourself work? Yes, it sure does. But it is totally different from the faith I am talking about. And I said, faith in yourself is doing things you know you are able to do or you have the knowledge or capacity to achieve. But faith in God is knowing you don't have the capacity, you don't have the ability, knowledge or resource to do it, but you know someone who does, who has the capacity, who has the knowledge, who has the ability, and who is willing to do it because he has said he will do it in his word. And there's another thing that worries us Christians. At times we think we know that God is able, but we sometimes fall short of our miracle because we think he's not willing to do it for me. Maybe because you think you've done one thing in the past that is wrong, or you've done the other thing in the past that is wrong, that you have fallen short of God's, God's favor, that God is no longer willing to do this for you. So based on that, it affects your ability to receive from God. I've come to announce to you that God is willing. Oh, he's way, way, way more than willing and able to do it for you. And you see them in the scriptures. Like the end man once came to Jesus and said, God, Jesus, we know you are able, but we don't know if you are willing. And Jesus responded to them saying, yes, I am willing. Do you believe that I can do it? So at times we we, we, we hinder and obstruct our ability to receive from God because we think God is not willing. You remember what how your life was in the past. You remember the things you've done wrong. You remember how, how, how you are not as righteous as you thought you should be so that based on that, you are not sure if God is willing to bring you out from that pit. You are not sure if God is willing to bring you out from that death crisis. You are not sure if God is willing to heal you. And it stifles your ability to receive from God. Let's hurry on. Glory be to God. The next thing that faith isn't is faith is not, it is not faith in heritage, but it is faith in God. What do I mean by it? it is not faith in heritage? I'll explain that. I grew up in a Christian home. My father was a minister. You know, I, I, I grew up around this. My father was a minister, an Assemblies of God minister. He was in the national leadership as well before he went to be with, before he retired, then went to be with Ellen. And my dad, watching him growing up, was a man of faith. And I, I dare say he influenced my obsession with faith. <laughs> I'm obsessed with faith. Because the Bible tells me that there's, there's no other way to live by except by faith. So I'm obsessed with faith. He influenced me, no doubt. I used to be his tape boy. I used to get his messages. I used to record them. I used to mass produce them for, for people to buy them and all that. So of course, I used to listen to his messages. So he influenced my journey in faith, no doubt. But the truth is that no matter how much my dad, being a giant of faith, <laughs> was, his faith will not work for me. The Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. Your faith only works for you. Don't worry, I'm going to explain this in the subtopic when I talk about the three kinds of faith. Don't worry. <laughs> Hold your horses, I'm going to do that. I'll explain it shortly in the scriptures. That's the truth. I need to live by my own faith as the righteous of God today. I need to learn how to operate and appropriate my faith so I can get this result the man of the Bible got. So I can get the results that men like my father got in their lifetime. 
So I won't say that because I come from this faith heritage stage that the faith of my dad will work for me. It doesn't work that way. Sorry to announce to you. It doesn't work that way. You need to sit down on God's word for yourself and build up your faith by yourself. Glory. That is why my dad's salvation could not save me. I also needed to hear the word of the Lord. I also needed to believe that Jesus died and resurrected. I also needed to be baptized before I was saved. His salvation is not transferable. My salvation is not transferable to my kids. They also need to have their own experiences, have their own encounters, have their own defining moments where God will work a work in their life so their faith in God will be built up. Your faith in God should not be built on another man's faith. It does not work that way. Such kind of foundation of faith will not carry you far, will take you nowhere. It will fail you. And it is important that we note that. I'm going to give a good example. Paul writing to the Philippians church. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 11. Let me get my Bible. Philippians chapter 3. See what he said in verse 4. He said, though I also might have confidence in my flesh, in my ability, in my pedigree. He said, if anyone else thinks he has confidence in the flesh, he said, I have more so, more than you. Now, if you think you have any pedigree, like I just talked to, talk to you about my dad. <laughs> so he, probably he's talking to me. He said, Pastor B, if you think you have any pedigree, I have more than you. And he listed out his resume. resume he listed out what he had on his CV. Now, take a listen to this, verse 5. He says, see, he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. I see his CV. But see what he now said in verse 7. He said, But what things we are gained to me, this I have counted loss. Why? It's for Christ. He said, Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ. I might gain Christ. So you must have your own personal journey of faith. Personal journey of faith. That's the way one of my mentors used to put it. He says, see, no matter the pedigree you come from or faith or hallmark of faith you think you descended from, that it will come a time where you will be tried and what you have on your inside what you've built on your inside over time will be tested to see what stuff it is made of. You see, see, Abraham, successful, wealthy, had his own challenges. He succumbed them by faith, became wealthy, became prosperous, became blessed, became the father of faith. What happened to his son Isaac? The Bible said in Genesis 26, it said a famine came to the land where Isaac was living and the Bible made it clear that this famine is not the same that occurred in the days of his father Abraham. It was a different one. What does that tell you? His father had his challenges, had famine. He faced famine, but he conquered it. He prospered in the midst of famine by faith. His son did not say, my dad was a father of faith, that I'm going to have it all rosy. No, 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 no. His trying time came. His own test came to see what stuff he's made up of. And guess what he wanted to do? <laughs> the Bible said that he got up, got his family, and he wanted to escape. He wanted to run. And a voice, God, told him, go nowhere. Sit down here and work out your faith. <laughs> Sit down here. So in this land, 
Let's see what stuff you are made up of. And what happened? The Bible says that Isaac obeyed, sold in that land, and he got a hundredfold. <laughs> he persisted through the challenge. He persisted through the famine. His own faith. If he had learned anything from his dad, this is the time to show it. <laughs> and guess what? He persisted through it and he came out on the other side successful. He put his faith in God to work and acted on his belief by sowing in that land. And the Bible says he got a hundredfold. Oh, my time is fast spent. I need to stop. I was hoping to get to two or three, three or four today. Oh, hallelujah. But this is how I end. It is faith in God, not faith in your heritage. When I was about six or seven, I was in my neighbor's house and we are doing all sorts of somersaulting, tumbling, and I hit my head on the ground. A few minutes later, that was the last I could remember. I passed out. I was being told when I came through a few days after that I was rushed to the hospital. The doctors, after checking, hooked me up to all every kind of um, emergency kits that they had. Told my dad, and just sorry, I'm rushing, I'm compressing the story. Told my dad that I should not, he should not stop praying, that I should come back to life, that he should forget it. That even if I come back to life, I'll be a vegetable. Why? I stayed longer than the medically prescribed time without oxygen going to my brain. That even if I come back to life, because of that, there will be brain damage. And he's suspecting that it has already occurred, that I will be a vegetable. So it is better for them and it's better for me that they let me go. Remember I told my dad he was a, was, was, a, was a man of faith. He did not let go. He said he told the doctor, no, 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 no. That his son will come back to life. Not only will he come back to life, he will come back whole, better than he was before he, in quotes, died. <laughs> Long story short, I am here preaching. 40 years on, I'm still preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, see why I told you that story. A few years ago, and I think it was 2015, my last son was about the same age too. He was about, um, I think he was much younger. He, was, he's, he celebrated his 10th birthday this year. That means 2015, he was about three or four. He was much, much younger. We came out from church in the afternoon and I wanted to get some rest because I was going to have fellowship later on that day in the evening. And I'll be ministering. So while I was trying to get some rest, my wife rushed into the room to say, hey, that my son was foaming in the mouth. And I remember clearly that they told me that when they finally found me, because when I hit my head, my neighbor saw that I was already disorientated. I was carried to my house, left in the city room, and they disappeared. So I was told that as I was in the city room, people did not really know what happened to me. They just thought I was just there resting. But after a while, they noticed that I was foaming in the mouth. That's when they raised the alarm. So I, when I was told that my son was foaming in the mouth, I was like, hmm, hmm, Satan, what are you trying to do? A famine in my own day that was not the same famine in the day of my dad. So it is time for my own fate to be tried. Long story short, my son is alive. He was 10. He was 10. Just few last week. What did I do? I carried him up because I was told also that when this happened and I was proscribed dead or whatever in the hospital, my dad carried me up before they put all those things in me. Told everybody to leave my room. Close the door that's in the hospital. Carried me up in the house before he took me to the hospital. Carried me up in his room. And told the Lord that when this boy was born, he was dedicated to you. And we made a covenant that he was going to be a preacher and was going to serve you. So there's no way this will be happening. I'm taking him to the hospital now. Walk your miracle. I did that same thing. I lifted my son up in my room. And I commanded the spirit of death or whatever to leave him. 
Why? Affliction cannot come a second time. What happened to my forefathers or my fathers cannot happen to me. The Bible says that the fathers ate the sour grain, but the feet of their kids are set on edge. And the Bible says that there's a day coming that when the fathers, the ones that ate the sour grape, will have their, their own teeth set on the edge, that there will not be a transferal of ancestral curses to their descendants. Oh, I'm sorry I cannot explain what I just <laughs> quoted from the scriptures for you today. But maybe, hopefully, if you remind me, if you come for a Tuesday Bible study, remind me I said this and ask me to shine one light to on it. I will. And I said, no, I am the repairer of the breach. I am the breaker of curses. We will have to stop this. And I spoke. I said, it ends here and now. I put an end to it. He was 3-4 then. Today, he's um, 10. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God worked a work. Why? Because I stood by faith in the word of God. My faith that I've built from God's word and from praying in tongues in God. I stood my ground and that young man was made whole. Hallelujah. So don't think that the faith we are talking about is faith in your heritage. The, your father's faith will not move your mountain. Your faith will. Ah, hallelujah. The faith of your pastor, I'm sorry to say, will not also move your mountain. Your faith will. Ah, I sense in my heart that somebody is like, the faith of your pastor will not move your mountain. Guess what? Remind me this on Tuesday. I'm going to explain this. At times we confuse the anointing on a man of God with his faith. Now, I grew up in, in a church, in a garden, in a country where we talk about the faith of the man of God. Oh, put your faith in the man of God and the faith of the man of God will work for you. No, the faith of the man of God will not work for you. The Bible says, the just shall live by his faith. The faith of the man of God is his faith. He lives by... Oh, I don't know if I have time to explain this. Tuesday, 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 please. Bible suffering. I'll show it to you from the scriptures. I'll explain it. What you are confusing with the faith of the man of God is called the anointing on the man of God. And the anointing of the man of God is not even the man's anointing. Why the Bible has made it clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that the Spirit distributes this, manifests these anointings and giftings as he, the Holy Spirit, wills. So if the Holy Spirit himself does not will it to be manifested, it will not be manifested. That is why having your own faith, building your own faith is very important. Because if you put your faith on the anointing of the man of God, it might fail you because the time you need it, it will not be made manifest. Oh, hallelujah. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. But listen to me. By the end of this series of faith, your life will not be the same. No, 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 no. It won't be the same. It won't be the same. No worry, I'll explain it. I said to my spirit, people ask a lot of questions. I'll explain it. I'll also, also talk to you about the gift of faith. Oh, don't worry. I'll explain it. Tuesday Bible study. We'll sit on God's word then. But listen to me. Listen to me. This week will be one of the weeks that will be a turning point for you. And for me, <laughs> I'm also making myself a target of this word. The word of the Lord is coming to me right now. Listen, this week, this weekend, this weekend, the Lord will open a door that no man will shut for you. The Lord will open a door for Pastor B that no man will shut. The heart of men and women will be touched to favor you, to favor Pastor B, to favor Activate Church. In the name of Jesus. When that door opens, no man can shut it. You will go through it and the things you've been expecting will come to you. Listen, I hear that someone like, yes, that the canker worm has eaten. Listen to me, this week, this month, 
Something is going to happen that will restore the years the canker worms have eaten. The years the caterpillars have eaten. He will compress multiple years for you in one. This June and July 2022. In the name of Jesus. It is your portion. You better believe it. After believing it, start acting. Start acting. Be on the lookout. Start taking corresponding actions of faith. It must happen. It will surely come. It will not delay in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I believe it. Just give God praise wherever you are. Just glorify Him wherever you are. Say, Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I worship you. There is no one like you. No one like you in all the earth. <laughs> Father, I thank you. Mandelekos interepas okotayas. Every chain is broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have an offering, this is the time to give it. Father, I bless the givers. Hmm. Oh, Father, I command the west and south wind to blow to them favor, favor, favor. Those going through financial hardship favor multiple streams of income in the name of jesus the ones paying their fights but let the covenant the new covenant be made manifest for them let it go into force for them and bring to them miracles upon miracles blessings upon blessings that they will not have room enough to contain it in the name of jesus we have prayed amen i love you i'm going to see you on tuesday Make sure you keep it there with me on Tuesday. If you've listened to me and you want this kind of relationship with God, you want it, you want it, you want it. It's very easy. Jesus died for you. He resurrected for you. He's coming back for you. Just say these words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died. I believe you resurrected. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come and dwell in me. Be my Lord, be my Savior. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, please send us a chat, an email to the addresses on the screen. We want to reach you. There's a whole lot we want to give you and share with you. So you can have a lovely, beautiful experience as a child of God. Hallelujah. Go succeed. Go prosper. For God is with you. Amen. Be blessed. See you on Tuesday. Bye-bye. We are having our first convention summit that God spoke to me about four years ago to start. You know, I've been waiting for us to do it, you know, in-house, if you know what I mean. But we're going to do it online first. You know. Holy Spirit talked to me recently about it, not to delay or dilly dally. So, having the first God Summit starting on the 13th of July to the 16th of July next month is going to be awesome. We're going to have some guest ministers that are coming from God. So, they're going to bring you fresh word from God. Now, what is God Summit? God Summit is an instruction God gave me to hold every year in some a couple of days or maybe in the future might be up to a week where we just come and talk about him it is all about god we focus on god we talk about him and he will show himself strong in our midst so it's going to be a meeting full of power you need healing make sure you're in those meetings you need a breakthrough make sure you're in those meetings you need if you marry a relationship you need a child make sure you are in those meetings the power of God will be heavy, strong in those meetings. See, there are no distance. There is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. So God will show up the Spirit to tabernacle with us all those days. I'm looking forward to it. So save those dates. Save those dates. It's going to be awesome.